This is a test of the Bounty Park Alert System. Yeah. Yeah. F U. No, that's not. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Latics football phone in. Oh, yeah. Um, Shattix made us this. It's Stephen Thompson's song time. It's time for the manager, Koki. You want Steve Thompson in? You want Steve Thompson out? In, out, in, out. Shake him all about. You do the manager Koki and you change your mind. That's what it's all about. Everybody now. Whoa. The manager Koki. Whoa. The manager Koki. Join in. Whoa. The manager Koki. Piss boil. Hashtag. Boo, boo, boo. Oh, and that's what it's all about. Piss boil hashtag. <laughs> that's boo. what it's all about. So yeah, that's um, basically uh, on the the gist of that is that uh, th- this time last week people were wanting him to have the job, and this <laughs> time this week <laughs> they don't. They don't. So fancy uh, that. How's about that then? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Oh, now then, now then, Dave. Uh, <laughs> um, so, so sorry. <laughs> So, um, <laughs> where, where, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I'm really sorry about that. It's all right. It's okay. Steve Coogan's just made a whole thing about yeah. doing an impression of him. So yeah, get but, paid handsomely for it. Yeah. And he has a great legal team. So, you know, just saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, yeah. we'll be meeting him next week, won't we? We will indeed. We're going to get the our books. Sorry, we won't be meeting Steve Coogan. We'll be meeting Alan Partridge. The God himself. At the Trafford Centre for the signing of his new book, Big Beacon. Mm. I'm, I'm quite excited there. I am uber. What are you going to say to him? I love you. Probably will and all, won't I you? will, yeah. You're the best thing to happen to comedy ever. Mm. Well, that'll be something to look forward to. And should we, should we, Jack, we should give him a Boundary Park Alert System t shirt? We should definitely try and encourage him to um, come on the show. To do something. I mean, we, we have, to be fair, um, already got this off him. Because... North, 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 Due to a pre existing contractual obligation, of which I will be deemed in breach of if I don't comply, I must read to you the following statement. Please vote for the Boundary Park Alert System podcast in the best non-league category at footballcontentawards.com. Matt, was that okay? That was fine. Thank you. Perfect, Alan. So now that's out of the way, um, and we've had the manager Corky there. Are you? Yeah, what do you think? I I think, well, okay, let's go back to basics, Dave. We've uh, played five under Thompson. We've not lost. Mm-hmm. But the last three games, the performances have been going backwards, haven't they? I think. But yeah. then the first half was all right against Maidenhead. Should have put them away, shouldn't we? The second half was abysmal. Yeah. So what we want from Carlos tonight is what your stance is on Thompson. Mm. In or out? Are you like Brad, uh, who last week was giving him the job, but then after Maidenhead game wasn't giving him the job? Maybe you are Brad, in which case yeah. you can come on and, yeah, Brad, and explain why interesting. you've changed your mind in a week. Uh, which, of course, you're totally entitled to do. But um, yeah, it'd be interesting. You know, it's it's one of them, isn't it? It's just one of them. So I thought I, it's a tough one. Lundstrom's back, and that's good. What are you doing? No, I'm just looking at these tweets. Like, give Tom all the job. Uh, do it now. Um, this is the reason why we need to do manager. <laughs> is this Brad? Yeah. Yeah. We're yeah, not yeah, picking yeah. on you, Brad. It's just no, no. It's just you're just an easy target. <laughs> <laughs> I'm <only> kidding. <laughs> no, no, no. It was it, everyone's entitled to their opinion. I'm. Oh, I don't know. It's really tough one because you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't, and I don't envy the board. You're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. Hey, so can, can we just kick him out? He damn it. 
Uh, remember in. not to what to click the right uh, link to watch. Yeah, um, the right honourable John. Just yeah, click the right on the link on Twitter. On Stop. One, yeah, unless you want to come on the show, then yeah. But anyway, look, Heed Army Podcast. Hang on. Hello, lads. Congratulations on your football content awards nomination. Yeah. That's something like what he would have sounded like if he was saying it. Thank you. What if he was from India? If he was from India. Yeah. And also, th- uh, congratulations to you on your award because you're there as well. So, um, but, but, don't, you but don't vote for the Heat Army. No, I bet you haven't got Alan Partridge giving you a, a nominee, a shout out, have you? But anyway, I, I hope you're going to be there. I think you are. I think you said you're going to be there. We'll look forward to seeing you. I enjoy, I'll look forward to you buying me a pint. Aye, where I man. Yeah. Uh, oh, here we go. Brad, hard to decide on Thompson. Last three games have been poor, but still unbeaten. Still unbeaten. That's the thing, isn't it, Brad? Still unbeaten. Still unbeaten. So, is it the is it the manager? Is it the players? Or the players? It's the fitness. Is it the fitness? Is it the fitness? I don't know. Should we ask Daryl? Yeah, bring in Daz, Bobby Dazzler. Daryl. Hey, Daryl. You guys all right? Yeah, he yeah, is. You. Yeah, you. What, have you, what have you made of the last few games and what we've just been talking about? Um, the last, the last five games, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. The last, last, oh, the last three were good because we won them all, didn't we? And then the last couple obviously yeah, drawn. We were, we were lucky at um, Kidderminster. I think we're too straight. It was a, it's an, ugly, an ugly win, which is fine. You get three yeah, points. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Last night, I was so disappointed with that second half. First half, we were at them. We were all over them. Uh, second half, I came, it's like, what's going on? Just, just carry on as you did in the first half. But there was nothing like that. I was so disappointed. I know. I know it was. There's just been signs of it, aren't there, over the last few games? Like you said, starting at Kidderminster, that they're just kind of going off the boil a bit with the, yeah. like not, you know. I don't think it's going it, off the boil. A bit. I mean, people say it's fitness and all that, but I think it's all the rubbish. How can you not be fit at this stage of season? Yeah, but they don't. Oh, injured, players, injured, injured players won't be up to speed, but the majority should be fit enough now. Well, you would have thought so, wouldn't you? But I mean, it doesn't. I mean, like against Maidstone, they were pressing and pressing and pressing and pushing us back, pushing us back, pushing us back. They looked like they had more. They just travelled up from Maidstone. Yeah. I would imagine they came up the same day. Travelled up on the coach, so they've they've yeah. not had the same preparation that we've had. Um, and in the second half, they they had us at sixes and sevens. They they, they had us on the back foot. We were scra- scrapping, scraping, chasing, um, and all that yeah. stuff. And it's just it wasn't good enough. I think we're a confidence team. I think we've had a, we had a, it was a tough game against Wilson. We got passed off the park. The shape didn't work. And I think it's really affected the confidence. I thought we scored that goal and I thought they thought it was job done against Merdina. And I think they sort of disrespected Merdina in some capacity last night. And, and, we, were, and we could have been punished severely. It could have been 3-1 last night to Merdina. I tend to agree with that in a way, but, the last five games, they've said they're not a confidence. You know, if we're unbeaten in five, sure, that builds confidence. Yeah, it does. But all, I think that there's, um, I think that they, they, they're just that fragile from the start that they've had this season. I think there's not enough leaders in that team. You know, Hogan mm. has impressed the last few games, to be mm. fair. Um, yeah. I think Lundstrom coming into it has looked good. I think losing Gardner's a massive impact because if you noticed against yeah. Wilson, he travelled down with the squad. I think that was just for more squad morale, really, because I think he's really yeah, turned I'm, the corner. I just want to talk to my son before you started. Uh, we're talking about it, yeah. And I was, I said to him, why, why can't we keep Gardner fit? If we we'll keep Gardner fit and in the team, we'd be in a lot better position now. If we had Gardner in last night, yeah. Just up it's. I mean, it's just. It's just Dan Gardner, isn't it? He's just. You know. He's. It's just the way he is. Unfortunately, uh, he, he can't stay fit, and we are definitely, definitely lightweight in that middle. We need some obviously long Shelton players. coming in. Shelton and Sheeran just doesn't work. It, all it did last night was encourage us to sit back. Personally, I would have changed the formation last night and 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 brought. And just to make sure that it wasn't Shelton and Sheeran in the middle, uh, and I would have gone four three three, and I started to ask them some more questions and tried to put them on the back foot a bit more. But he just didn't fancy it, did he? For whatever reason, so I, th- I think I think you know, although Reed scored last night, the the two the two lads leading the line didn't do anything. Norwood wasn't closing down. Reed wasn't pressing. 
Yeah, they, they're, they're lazy. They're lazy to say. I don't. I don't want to diss a guy who scored four in five, but they, he weren't pressing at all. Repeating every me, everything me and my son have been talking about before he came on. No, it was lazy. Hudson was way too yeah. sl- too slow with the distribution as well. I thought he could have got the ball out quicker yeah. and put him under a bit more pressure. But again, we, we were just going through the motions last night from what I saw. That's why I thought we just... Dis- a, a, a lot of credit last night. He's been not, not recently. Well, sort of. Particularly I in the first played half, played really, he played really, really well. Yeah, no, he, he did, yeah. 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 I mean, he settled the goal, didn't he? From, from him. Yeah, our goal came from him. Yeah. He ran down the wing, beat two players, lost the ball, but went back and won it back. Yeah. Passed it into the middle, then it went out wide, crossed it in goal. Yeah. Now, you know, a lot of people knock him. I know maybe he's not all right, but he's a good footballer. He is a good footballer, yeah. We said before, like, if you can go from centre-half to right-back and hold your own uh, this level, then yeah. you must be a decent footballer. It's not easy to do. So, yeah. what do you I, reckon? I, what's, I, what... What's your view on to- on on the Thompson situation or the managerial situation? Should should um, should it carry on for for a while while we're unbeaten, or is it time to make a permanent? No, so like, I've been thinking about what you know since he took over, and I'm thinking that like, we're unbeaten in five. Yeah, great. Even if he took that, but if we still had under the field, let's say if we'd have lost a couple of them games, we'd have probably lost last night. Um. So, you've got to look at the positives and say, yes, he's done well five games, doing really well. First half last night, they were brilliant, they were absolutely brilliant. You know, I don't know what happened second half, I don't know what went wrong or what went on or whatever. Whether it was lazy man, they saw place, they thought, oh, we've got this game, it's all right, we're all right. You know, and you get a bit complacent, if you like. Um, I, I, would, I would keep it till the end of the season, see how we go. Right. One major reason for that as well, if you look look back, we, we will have had to pay um, tons of off, which wouldn't have been cheap, would it? No, I think. But you got to you got to remember that Maidenhead got a result, a one all draw at Chesterfield as well. So they're no mugs. You know what I mean? That you know, so decent no, result. Not, I mean, that this is the thing. They can teams can turn it on, can't they? And sometimes, what for whatever reason, because I'm like, we've not been watching like. Their, their squad and who's in and who's out. Maybe they've got a couple of players come back in the last couple of games and all of a sudden they've really picked up. And because the team yeah. that they used today, especially in that second half, they weren't a bad side, were they? They did what they did well and they put us mm. under a lot of pressure, although we did capitulate and, and we're bobbins. So, yeah, yeah. Well, we've no. so yeah. many times yeah. pressure yeah. instead of yeah. staying on the front foot, stay attacking them, keep going at them, yeah. get that second goal, and then it's more like game over, isn't it? Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. It was a shame. We do invite pressure. It'd be eight, eight, eight nil on Saturday against uh, Dagenham. Back off, off and running again. Hopefully. Right, oh. we're going to move on to oh, more thanks. callers, mate. All right, thanks for calling, oh, Daryl. Cheers. Thanks, Daryl. Thanks. Bye, 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 bye. We're up against Champions League tonight, aren't we? Yeah, let's do it, Gaz. Oh no, Gaz. Oh, sorry. Yeah, okay. Oh, sorry. No, it's fair enough. You oh, call him. Yeah, it's all right. Okay. Here he is. Hi, Gaz. Wagwan. <laughs> all right, lads. You're all right. Yeah, yeah, good. You. Yeah, not bad at all. Uh, hiya. <laughs> Go on. Go on, say it. Nah, yeah, I've, no, I've just you. not... I've, you're, on, I'm on, you're on telly as well as my phone. It's just a bit oh, off-putting. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, that's too much Matt and Dave, that guy. No, it's really just is. enough. Uh, do you know what? I was at main stand up for last night. Took my little girl. Um, just thought I'd try and have a proper watch of the game. Sober. And uh, from a decent view, yeah. Um, and I, I said, I thought I said it even in the first game under Thompson at York. I'm not comfortable with four four two. A, I don't think we're fit enough. B, I don't think we're fit enough. C, I don't mm-hmm. think we're fit enough. To to do the four four two with the two in the middle, we, you know, just to add to what I've just said, we need to be mega fit. And obviously, we're not. Our hits. It's been evident all season that we're not. Um, and also with this, the four four two, I think we do need two ball players in the middle. Um, Lundstrom, you can see, he's made a difference straight away, but he, he doesn't really have a midfield part midfield partner to really pass the ball to um, and get us up the pitch. So a lot of the time last night, he was he was holding on to the ball a bit 
bit longer than I was comfortable to, really. But his options really were either try and drive forward in between three or four of their players, or sticking his foot on it and go back. I think if we could see Lundstrom in there with Gardner or a Ward, and, we, and if we want to keep Sheeran in, then that would be my preference. But at the moment, I just don't think we've got the personnel to go with the two. And I think that's why our second halves were looking poor. I think every every game under Thompson, we've changed the shape after about 55, 60 minutes. Yeah. I think, and I think, and I think it is down to the system as being knackered. So what? how would you start the game? What formation? Oh, I've taught. I've been speaking about this today. I I think we recruited for three five two. Um, so I think that's what we'd have to we'd have to try and go with. I think I completely understand why Thompson is sticking with four four two. And in actual fact, it's the five games he's been in. We've started with the same system, and it's probably no coincidence. We've had half decent results, but we are getting found out, aren't we? In the second half, so I think every second half, to be honest, has, hasn't been great. Um. But with the short turnarounds, what can he really do in between the games? There's, there's not much at all, is it? There's recovery, a bit of work on the opposition, yeah, and a dabble, and a, dabble a bit of motivation. So it, it's a tough one for him. It's... What we need to do really is to be putting chances away first half in it and building up a bit more of a, a bit more of a cushion if possible. But I mean, that's easier said than done, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, in front of the main stand up last night, the right hand side, I thought Sutton. Norwood and um, Lundstrom linked up really well. Um, Sutton had a great first half, and, and Norwood did. He, Norwood, for me, was the best player on the pitch in the first half. He was dropping deep. He was a few little nice touches, getting the ball wide. And Reed's um, movement off him was really good, wasn't it? So there yeah, was. It, it looked like a good partnership, didn't it? Absolutely. I was looking at it thinking, I like this. But you you could just see, as soon as Maidenhead kind of clicked on, that Sheeran was limited. And and that's that's the thing. He is when he gets the ball, he takes no responsibility whatsoever. It's a very very easy basic pass, and it, it kind of sometimes does undoes the work where what, what Lundstrom or someone else has done to get us forward. But like, yeah, did we? Was it was at the end of the first half? When I thought Norwood should have had a shot. He went boxed and he went for the pass, mm-hmm. um, which which shocked me really because I thought yeah. we're going to have yeah, this yeah. right selfish bastard up front who'd shoot every time he got an opportunity. But yeah. I, just, I don't think we've seen enough of that from him. And is part of the reason do you think that that he's not getting in the box and getting enough chances because of this thing in midfield where he's because he's playing very deep, yeah. isn't he? You've yeah. seen him in a lot of. He, 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 he went to ten yesterday in the second half when we changed the shape, and I, I'll I'll tell you as well why I've got I've got a suspicion why he's looking not as well as I thought he would. I think he's I think he's two three steps ahead of people behind him on the pitch. He's making so many runs and not being seen. Um, yeah, he, he was unlucky in the second half when it fl- when Nuttall flicked it on and the American head defender yeah. just got there because he was ready for that, weren't he? Yeah. Or was it Dickinson who flicked it? It was one of the two, but yeah. he was ready. He was primed to shoot and ready to go. But if that, I think that would have been two 0 at the time. Yeah. He's, he, and it's he, just it's just not move, not going for him, is it? You know what I mean? His runs aren't being seen. I think that's why he's dropped deeper. Um, and like saying on that right hand touch line, right hand side touch line yesterday, I thought she showed some played some really nice stuff. A bit, a bit slow and a bit meh, but I don't know. I just thought the whole atmosphere was a bit flat and a bit it was. dingy last night. It was it was weird. Yeah, the Rochdale yeah, yeah, Road yeah. was so it was, quiet. It was, it was weird. Um, it, I yeah, mean, if you can't, look, I mean, if you can't get yourself up for Maidenhead at all, what's what's going on? Do you know what I mean? Well, I, I tweeted at half time. I thought, I thought we marginally deserved our lead. We didn't do anything spectacular. We were fortunate with the goal, but. They created nothing, did they? So we deserved it. But then second half, they're two off the line. They should have won the game, really. Two yeah, off yeah, the yeah, line. Yeah. Yeah. Saved by Hudson. The goal was a worldie. But, you know, if you're going to keep inviting people to shoot, yeah. the Coopers keep dropping Yeah, off. pot shot. It was it. a pot shot, weren't yeah. it? Keep dropping off, dropping off, yeah. dropping off. Oh. I, I was disappointed once they got the equaliser that we didn't spend 10 minutes really putting them under it. Yeah. Um, no. The, the ball was hardly in play for the six minutes of added time. I mean, the, hardly in play. The crowd didn't get behind Oldham when they scored either, I thought. I thought it was just very, just we knew it was going to happen and it's just the inevitable's happened, so is, let's just go for a is draw. It, is it partly 
because there's the slight sort of a sense of uncertainties around things. You know, like the crowd have been getting behind Steve Thompson and and, and shouting for him and all that kind of stuff. And but there's almost like we it kind of feels like we're in sort of treading water sort of territory, even though like we've we've not lost in five and things have definitely improved. But I think maybe just at the back is everybody's mind. Do you think it's kind of like is it what is it now? Three, four weeks nearly. Four yeah. weeks. It's a long what, time, guys. What we before we move on, guys? What what would you do if, uh, given the the opportunity? Would you stick with Steve and 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 Redders, or would you be would would you be bringing somebody else in, or does it depend on who? What I mean, because we don't know who's actually available or who's putting us forward, do we? Yeah, I mean, looking at looking at who's available, there's there's no one who's really jumping out and saying I want him. The one I wanted, Daryl Clark, is gone. That's mm. the one that I've gone hell for leather for, but he's gone. So to me, um. I, I wouldn't. I still wouldn't be in any immediate rush unless we started to take a massive downturn because it, the the fixtures. I think for the next two or three, they've been they fell nicely while he's come in. They're not mm. bad for the next few weeks either, and I think that gives us enough time to get someone in. I, I tweeted again today. I think we'd be mad to not even speak to Gateshead and Altrincham for Parkinson or Williamson. I think we've got to have a conversation with those two. I know the styles might get the main stand all having anginas because of the lights play out from the back, but I think they both, because Parkinson in particular, knows the league well enough to perhaps still have an impact this season. That being said, if they are available, I'm not. I'm not really sure. Who, who, I'm not really Wh- sure about there. Williamson, yes. Parkinson, no, because it. it- it's his backroom staff, from what I've heard, who are the, the brains behind the operation. He's a good manager, but he's not a coach, whereas Williamson is pure tactic, ticker-tacker yeah. football, playing it out from the back. It's all his system. It's all his way. But as you say, it won't be the main stands cup of tea <laughs> no. at all. No, well, it's a cute thing. You know, when Curl's tried doing it, I know Curl did it and, you know, playing out from the back. What are they doing? Playing it from the bloody back? Yeah. Pumping it forward. It just... Move the but Williamson, I, I, I would have, I would if you know Thompson and Redfern have done a good job. But if it was a choice for me, uh, or Williamson or Parkinson, Williamson every day of the week and twice on Sunday. I think, I think the one thing you can see from Thompson and, and Redfern is, is that they, 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 they're at, there has been an immediate impact. They've got a bounce that Unsworth didn't even get when he came in, so they have had that. He seems a lot. They both seem well. When, not Redfern, but Thompson seems a really likable guy. He's really honest. I've liked everything he said after every game. Mm. He's not dressed it up. He's still low. But we've had two. We've had three weeks of Tuesday, Saturday. He's he's not probably really been able to do much coaching in in terms of what he wants us to do. But the the, the fitness is an issue, and we've got square pegs in round holes, and that you know is down to the recruitment team at the end of the day. Which is the so manager. <laughs> I just think move. I just think I think we've got a couple of fixtures where we can we can probably really really t- take a little bit more time and just point the wrong the, you know the right person um, and, and then it goes from there. But I, if you're asking me now at the moment, I would I would stick and back him even now because we need a centre midfielder, we need a right back, and we need a cover at left back because if Kitchen goes down suspended or injured, we yeah. are. Fucked. We're in big trouble, aren't we? Because that <laughs> um, that left hand side, like last, I thought Green was very, very quiet last night. He didn't really have much of an impact on the he game. Were in the I, game? No, he, he and, in the game. I know, and yeah, and, so, crap, and the goal came from from Kitchen again. Most of our threat comes down that left hand side. Yeah. If we lose that delivery, we are in trouble. If, if, if a team nullifies <laughs> Kitchen, we, we're not creating anything. No, at no. all. Especially if if down the other side, um, like last night, Green's off his game. So, yeah, yeah look, the, we are we have a look, and this is. We are a, we're we're a work in progress. Like I say, you don't go from last season's the squad that started last season to um to this season, and then all of a sudden just be like world beaters. We are a work in progress. Clearly, Unsworth wasn't getting the um the most out of uh, out of the squad. Um, no, Thompson's getting more. Thompson's, Thompson's getting more out of them, but there, there's still a lot of work to do, isn't there? We still, like you say, we need recruitment. Gaz, yeah, just uh, just, Gaz, one, just last Gaz, one before one, I go. Gaz, do you know um. Against York, the first 20 minutes, 25 minutes against York, Thompson's first mm. game. Every time they get a goal kick, we had Willoughby, Gardner, not all parts on the edge of their box, stopping them playing. We got high up the pitch. And we said after 25 minutes, didn't we, we'd run out of steam because we'd played at an intensity we'd not done all season. Mm. 
don't think we've seen that intensity since. Still, no. Well, we saw a little bit. We saw a little bit with Willoughby when he started pressing, and they got the. That's how they got the goal against Wilston, wasn't it? Willoughby yeah. pressed, and then they lost the ball, and Reed scored yeah, that finish. That was, but that was that was it. That's all. It I've was seen a since. moment, though, wasn't it? it yeah, wasn't yeah, 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 yeah. period. So, so I would accept twenty minutes at the start of each half, really going at it like that, and I reckon that's where you'll get your goals, and then you can probably afford to get a bit of a rest and sit in for a little bit, but. I just haven't seen that level of aggression or like point to prove since that first 20 minutes against York. I think I'd like to see a bit more of that. Just one more thing before we go. Mark Hughes has come available because he's just been sat by Bradford. What are your thoughts on that, Gaz? I'd rather shit in my hands in the flat. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Gaz. See you next Sorry, time. Lads. Good call, mate. Cheers. As if Mark Hughes. And Mark Hughes at all. Imagine. Absolutely. I'd rather shit in my hands and clap. <laughs> yeah. God, what an image that is. Uh, just think, uh, there's just to, to change the image, the raincoat that I was wearing last night was beautiful. What, it the Rick was, Astley one? No, no, I was wearing my Inspector Gadget flash on mac What, the, the white one? No. You like that long one, that long rain. The coat. Rick Astley one. Does, does Rick Astley wear that, does he? In in the video, yeah. In the video. Well, the video. The video. Uh, anyway, yeah. so thanks for that. Yeah, beautiful. Uh, Martin Barlow, Mark Bastard Hughes is available. Being sat by Bradford, time to make amends. No, Reese, uh, young Reese. When are you coming back with the vlogs, Reese? Yeah. Um, Kitchen, our most important player. Yeah, he is. And I think he's very, very yeah, 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 pivotal. Yeah. Go, go, gadget, Matt. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> the court was idea. class. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Should Don't we get come. Chris in? Uh, no, let's chat to our mate Ibby first. Okay. Chris, you're next, mate. Chris, yeah, Chris you'll be next, next, okay? Yo, Ibby. Evening, guys. You all right? Yeah, how are you doing? I'm all right, Matt. And uh, Dave, are you okay? I'm very well, thank you. Yourself? Just yeah, I'm to, all right. Just, Ibby, we just need to correct Dave on this. It wasn't really being pressed for Will Stone's goal. It was Dickinson. And, it was, and Andy said that on the podcast. So we stand corrected. Oh, sue me, Ibi. Yeah. What do you make of the what do you make of the the last couple of performances and results? Uh, it it happens, uh, Matt and Dave, because you can't keep winning games. He's done a good job. I, I won't be getting on his back at all. I've got a lot of respect for him, but I think um, he deserves an interview, no matter what. And uh, the club needs to uh, interview everybody, make a decision as soon as possible, because. Um, we need to know who's coming in, what's the plans are, and I've got no grudges against Steve Thompson. He's a lovely person, and uh, fair dues to him. He's done a good job. I won't be getting on his back, but yesterday, second half was very bad. But it happens. It happens in football games. Yeah, I think so. I think I think that maybe it would just be good to get it. I can't. I don't think you can carry on in this state of limbo for too long. No, there's a danger that you become complacent. There's a danger that there's the uncertainty. <laughs> it affects decision making. It affects morale. It affects everyone. The crowd get nervous. Thompson will get frustrated. The players will get frustrated because mm. it, 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 it's a state of limbo. It's a state of flux, isn't it? And you don't want to. You don't want that, do you? I wonder how long it could go on for this interim period. <sighs> it's got. You've got to make a decision by mid. Make a decision by mid October for me. So in the next couple of weeks, two weeks, two weeks. He's had yeah. seven games, seven games, won't it? Oh, it'd be six. No, it'd be seven games, which is a long time in football. Mm-hmm. Uns have had what, ten games yeah. and got sacked. What What do you make of our captain at full time? Um, squaring up at fans, saying the f word wasn't very nice. I didn't see it. I didn't see it. What was that all about? I don't know. I think he was uh, upset with the booze. And um, as you know, the game is very passionate. Maybe something was said where I was sat, but I didn't hear anything uh, bad. But uh, F sign wasn't mm. good, really, because um, we've supported he's, him. He's, 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 he's conceded a goal. Well, he's, he's, he's conceded a goal in the last two minutes of the game. You're going to be frustrated. He knows the second half they didn't play well. And as captain, he's probably going to take a little bit more responsibility than most of the players. And the last thing you want to hear is a boo. You know what I mean? They're still unbeaten in five. Now I don't I'm not I'm not I'm not saying that he shouldn't have done it, but I can see where he's coming from because the Oldham fans sometimes, I'm sorry, they're absolute idiots and they can be toxic. You know, we've drawn at home, all right. It's not ideal, but we're still we're unbeaten in five. We're playing all right. We're getting points yeah. on the board. We've had eleven points out of fifteen. 
what do they want? Do they want 5 0 every game? Yeah, everyone wants that, but yeah. you've got to be realistic. I think it's individuals well, no, no. more than I think it's individuals more than anything. I think maybe certain individuals oh, hurl abuse at, at people and you know, maybe maybe he's just had enough uh, if that's the case. But I mean, I mean, so Gaz was saying something they didn't hear any boos at all there. I mean, there was there was a couple of boos when Shelton came on again from the Rochdale Road. Put that then. comment up. Put that um, Martin Barlow. Which one? This put one? that one. Yeah, yeah. I'm well. Aware. I know he's had 50 games, but I'm saying 10 games this season. Then he got sacked. Just yeah. all right, sorry. Yeah. Just annoyed right. me. Says, uh, yeah. Jeremy, do you sound like Roy? Oh, have a day off, Martin. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I well, uh, Give us I, a ring, Martin. Yeah. I, I heard you speaking about uh, the gate side manager. I can't see him coming to Oldham. Uh, I think um, he's going to get a very good higher job. He's highly rated. I wouldn't be surprised if we see him one day in the Premiership managing somebody I bet you, because. I bet, you, I bet you Bradford will be sniffing around him. Yeah, Bradford my yeah, it's not a bad shout because it's yeah. I just hope the they are a big they are a big draw, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be difficult on Saturday. Uh, another tricky game. Yeah, well yeah, but they've lost they've only got one point in fifteen. They've lost four out of the last five. They've got a draw against Halifax. Nailed on there um, to uh, win yeah. the boundary So yeah. Yeah, they've not won yeah. in five. Uh, we've not lost. Yesterday when uh, at the game when it was about sixty minutes in. I knew that these guys are going to equalise from so many. Just it, you have that strange feeling. But yeah, honestly, this was a belter goal. It was a brilliant goal by them. Yeah, made too easy though by uh, by backing off again and not getting stuck. Did in. you put that one up by Martin? Then that one, did he? I sound yeah, like Rock. Yeah. yeah, well, Martin, come on, come on, let's have it out. <laughs> I'm not having that. Come on, bring it on. Yeah. Martin, when are we going to get somebody from the club uh, to come on the show? Hopefully, uh, I'm yeah. working on it. I'm working on yeah, it. Yeah, I would look. I, I would love to see Neil Redfern uh, pop up uh, on the show because I love to hear everything about him because he's a legend and it would be a very interesting show with him. Well, yeah, I'll do my best for you, B, as always. Do you mean, know, the one thing I can assure you about Dave is he does mither people. Yeah, mither the slip. people into the ground. Yeah, yeah. 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 So I really thank you uh, guys for having me on, and uh, at the moment I'm happy with with what's happening. And hopefully he'll uh, bounce back on Saturday, get three points, and then uh, we'll we take it each game as it comes. But at the moment, it's not broken, so let's not uh, change it. Fair enough, mate. Yeah. All right. Yeah, thanks thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Bye. Take care, mate. Bye. Right. Let's. Is Martin you. still being a chicken and not coming on? It looks like it. Yeah. Mm. Well, then he doesn't want to talk to you. Angry, sexy dick. Yeah, you don't want to take on the uh, angry sex monster. Mm, oh God. <laughs> I know. Oh, Sorry about that. God, Jimmy Southman, oh, now that. Oh God. <laughs> all right, Chris. <laughs> yeah, you okay? <laughs> yeah, I'm all right. How are you? Yeah, not too bad, yeah. Yeah, and I, I, I know that, that that image rocked your mental <laughs> for, a, for a minute, didn't it? Oh, I'm really no, no, didn't, no, no, it, it aroused I know, him. I know. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to the Latics Football Forum, Chris. The CD session with Dave Bradley. Mm, no, uh, welcome, Chris. What do you want to say, Change mate? Change the subject, Chris. Yeah, I know. Um, yeah, I mean, it, obviously, the questions about it's questions around Steve Thompson in there. I think, I think it is hard. I think, like Pierce, it's already been said. Really, I think he, he won't have had time to properly coach him because he's just, he's, it's just a convers- It's just a, a, a situation of. Of kind of resting legs and stuff, isn't it? But I just think we're, we're so tactically inconsistent, and I think we have been under Steve Thompson as well. And I don't know. I just I don't know if he's the right man. I don't think he's necessarily done anything wrong, and and I don't think he's. Um, I thought you know, obviously he's, he's done a good job in sense of results to an extent. I just think the style of play and I just the, the performances have been so poor. Um, I think Thompson. yeah I just I just think I, I question whether he's the right man and and I don't know I think it quite you question whether whether is it is the right man available and I think that's the question mark obviously we talked about Williamson at Gateshead and I like, I like Williamson at Gateshead I think he's got a, a really clear style and I think that's what that's what I'd like to see I think I'd want to see that consistency of us like some of us trying to play play a particular style. Um, if we if we brought somebody like him in though, like, do we have the players now to to yeah. play that style? And like the point that Gaz made before about 
about uh, the four four two and the fitness and stuff like that. I think at the I think this is why I'm finding it hard to not. I don't want to use the word judge Steve Thompson, but like it's difficult to see like what the manager can do. If you look at the bench and you when you when you sit in there watching the game and you're thinking, what changes can I make here? It doesn't. There's not like it's difficult in it, and I think mm. that whoever it is is. Like we, you know, with Unsworth and that, but you, the manager has to bring the players. Like Williamson has recruited to play the system that he wants to play. Hogan's not you playing it out from the back kind. Maybe you've got Hobson. You know, you it's, can, you it's, could, it's it's you difficult. Could argue, you could argue that Thompson's done the recruitment. Well, he's done the recruitment, hasn't he? Do you know what I mean? I know, obviously, Unsworth is in charge. And is it just the question? I mean, we're questioned, isn't it? some of the players are some of the players you know right for the system I think the system's changed especially with Norwood coming in I don't think we expected that to happen and I think it's come off and we've gone all oh, like the same with Raglan I think that was one that kind of, kind of at the start of the season they wouldn't have planned for and then they started getting offered players at higher level this that this you know left right and centre um, I, 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 I think I think we've got to remember is that say if we'd have just appointed I don't know a manager straight away and they got the, the level of results that Thompson had got They'd be getting wax lyrical now because the, I think the only reason that's working against Thompson is that he was the head of recruitment. He's brought some of these players in. There's still the same issues are happening with these players. It, the fact of the matter is that Shelton isn't good enough, is he? He's not good enough for this level or he's not playing the way the manager wants him to play. But two managers now have got him playing and he's still making the same issues, backing off, not marking. But he does a lot of pointing, so his arm must be knackered every game because that's all he seems to do. You know, but Sheeran's improved and Lundstrom coming in, I think Sheeran plays a lot better with um, with a, a good player beside him, to be fair to him. Oh. And also, we haven't seen enough of Dan Ward. I'd be interested to see what that dynamic is in a 3-5-2 potentially. You know, because I think yeah. we, we, we adopt that that formation a lot better because second half against Kidderminster, we were we, we, we were battering him after we scored that second goal. So there's still there's still I think there's still a bit a few more options up that he's got, but I think we're crying out for a low midfielder in the centre and, a, and someone at right back down the wing because Sutton, if we went to a three five two, can't play that position. I don't think I don't think he can. And then he'd be yeah. back up for Raglan, Hobson and Hogan, who will be the first choice. Or Sutton could probably vie for that place against Raglan, you know? So, yeah. I think I think it's hard. I think, like I say, I think any manager who comes in, it's going to be so hard for them because they, they're going to come in and they're going to inherit a, a, a squad that's kind of all over the place. It doesn't, there's no clear style with, that, with the squad that we've got that fits everyone in and, and kind of fits, fits with what we've got. We'd need to recruit no matter what style we play, we talk, you know, four four two. We need a midfielder. Yeah, arguably, we need a right back. Although to be fair, I think Sutton's properly stepped up. I think he had a, a bit of a rocky start to the season, didn't he? But I think he's really mm. grown into into that position. Still looks a bit shaky at times, but he's young in it, so he's going to. Um, he's still learning as well. Also, it's not his natural position, is it at all? But um, you know, even if you people have talked about three five two, and and you know the, the issue is then is you, you don't fit Devan Green in a system who's arguably one of our best attacking players because he's not a yeah. right wing back, and then the, well, the, the what, issue is we've got that's players. What, that's what Paul here was saying, it, and but he seems he wants to play Green twice, which you definitely can't do, can you? <laughs> can't play him twice. Yeah, Green. No. So he'd wait. Norwood, Norman, <laughs> Hobson, Hogan, Raglan. So you're dropping Sutton, One, two, three, uh, Kitchen, what's so all Ward, who's injured at the minute, but Longstrom, Dickinson, Green, Norwood, Reed, Green, and Kitchen. So it's 12. Ki- <laughs> kitchen, tw- kitchen twice as well. No, sorry, Paul. I mean, you made a nice compliment about my jacket, but that team just doesn't work because it's got the wrong players in it. No, I, I agree. I think we've got, I think we have got the, the centre backs for it. I think we've got three really, really class centre backs. I think yeah. it, it's a real shame that you haven't seen Raglan, Hogan, and Hobson as a three because I think they would be unbelievable in this league. Mm. Um, but I think, again, it just relies on your ability to then go out and put, put a right back, right wing back in place. And we've seen it that, you know, we saw it first game of the season, didn't we? And sort of, yeah. it was just, you know, he got sent off in the end, didn't he? But, um, yeah, I don't know. I just, I, I, I just want to see a, uh, I want to see a manager come in with a clear style, and that might be Thompson. It depends on his plan. It, that's the difficult thing. Is you know, so he's going to have conversations with the board, isn't he? He's going to have conversations with with Darren and Frank, and he's going to. Yeah. It's a question mark of whether, you know, whichever whichever manager comes in, though, Chris, they're not going to be able to whatever they want to do. 
they're going to have to make do with what they've got initially and they're going to have to get the best out of them. And then it's going to be another overhaul, more recruitment, get rid It's go- We're going through that it's whole going process. It's consolidation. Again. And that's why, get like, we- that's why we've had to like, just be patient because it's not, it's, it doesn't just happen overnight. We've got to get that balance right. And the next manager um, or the current manager, if he's going to be the next full-time manager, um, needs the time to to assemble a team that a squad, as not just a team, a squad that that that, that works. And because this one doesn't at the minute, I mean, it's it's do. And so, like, so when you put when you look at it that way, you look at the results in the last five games. Good hop, good haul of points. Um, it's you eleven, know, eleven and fifteen. You can't he's, fault he's, it. He's done well, and he? he's 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 done much better than than the previous manager. So we've got to give him credit. So are you definitely are you Tom a, a Thompson? No, employ someone else. Is that what, you, I, what you're I'm saying? Not, I'm not. I'm not a solid no. Like I say, you can't ignore what he's done in 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 the you know the results that he's got to an extent. I just I just think it's the quality of the performances. But yeah, like you say, it's going to be hard for any manager. I think, like I say, even if everyone. You go, oh, well, you know, even if you'd have brought in, everyone was raving about Daryl Clark. Even if you'd walked Daryl Clark and he'd have come in, he'd have had the same issues and the same problems. And people would have been saying the same things until he's he's been into the market, picked up a player, picks up players to, to fit a system. And I think that's going to be the same for Thompson. The, 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 thing, the question is, do we make a decision so we enable them for him to go, right, OK, let's go and recruit the players we need. And is the money there to be able to do that? That's the question. It- that's what I was coming on to. Do you, yeah. as devil's advocate, do you think the board may give Thompson the job and say, you, you've got what you've got and that's it? Because, you know, you've recruited them. We don't want to spend any more money. We're at our limit. We need to offload players. Or do they go for the expensive option of bringing in a manager who says, I need two or three, four more, five more signings? Um, that's the, that's the thing, uh, isn't it? That, Especially if you're. Sorry, especially if you look at Williamson at Gateshead, you're going to have to pay to bring him in, aren't you? So if you're spending money there as well, you then got the money of the players. So is Steve Thompson the better option? Because you don't have to, well, you're going to, you're going to go up his wage, surely. But, but oh, yeah, I think, I think ultimately it's going to do a detriment to the club, isn't it? Because we know that we can't go on like this. So I'm sure we've got a board under Corny. It would have been totally no chance. Or well, let's not even mention the other two. But under Corny, you would have said, you've got what you've got. You could have probably one player who's a lone player, and and that's it. And then he'd probably spend big at the end of the season to try and keep us up like he did with Iwilumo Iwil- and uh, Lee Barnard at the time. Do you know what I mean? When it was under Dickoff. It, I, hopefully the board aren't going to do that. I don't think they will because we're getting a lot more crowds and we need to move up, don't we? I just want to comment on this about the Y352 um, and just think about what the other options are. So if it's not 442 and it's not five uh, 352, then 433... Is the next combination that four two pick. three one? Um, so like if you played four three three, we could we've got Ward, Lundstrom, and Dickinson. Who you could play in the midfield. Uh, you've got we haven't seen um Willoughby and uh Norwood and Reed, for example. It would have to be that kind of that. I mean, that's a that's a kind of a four three three that you could try. I would have yeah. preferred to have seen that last night than to bring Shelton back into the because we know what we're going to get, don't we? Um, I'm not impressed with not been impressed with Nuttall yesterday. I thought there was one moment yesterday where it's like, can he not sprint? Because there was a ball that went down that left hand side that he could have got onto. He just seems to have one one speed. Mm-hmm. And and for for a forward, you've got to be there's got there's got to be another gear. And I've not seen that change of gear in him in terms of his in terms of his speed. And it bothers me a little bit. The ball didn't stick. He was he was he was he was useful for coming back for set players because of his height. But really, I, I'm, I'm, we need more from from not all. Um, you, could, you, you could have a four-two-three-one: Sutton, Hobson, Hawk, and Kitchen at the back. Shear and Lundstrom, Green, Dickinson, Tollett, or Reed, and then Norwood up front or not all. You know what I mean? So I, think, there is a bit- I think I think the issue with four-three-three is I think we've got so many central strikers, and I think that's the mm. issue. Is if you're talking about playing four-three-three, you're talking about strikers drifting wide, aren't you? In that yeah. circumstance, so you're talking about playing. We we talked about it, don't we? You know, we we Unsworth did it, didn't he, at the start of the season? Will be out left? He did. Um, do you know what I mean? And then I just think he got they got so isolated. Like you, you're leaving one striker up front, and I just think they become so isolated. It kind of I depends. Mean, that it depends how you play it, though, doesn't it? I mean, yeah, it if, if, if 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 your front three keeps stretching, and 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 you know, if you have to play quite a narrow game, and you have play, 
And I mean, obviously you're, you're opening yourself up down for attacks and stuff like that, but that, that's what, co- that's the co- that's the coaching style. And we've already said, not the coaching style, but that's up to the coaches to, to, to work on that. The point is, is that there's a number of different formations and we have to work with what we've got. You know, you've got like, you've written, mentioned Tollett there. He comes on down the right hand side. He's not a winger. No. He's definitely a 4-3-3 type player. So it's but that's why the managers make you know that's why they're prepared to do the they, job in it exactly it's up to them to make to make something happen but yeah I mean I think you know, at the end of the day what we're doing is we're talking about why it's difficult why it's not so straightforward and it's because because we've had two draws let's face it it would have been two may have been two losses do you know what I mean and anyone changes the tactic when you draw are, are we just being are we just being a little bit I don't know I don't are we just being a little bit unrealistic to say so. that. I don't think anyone's particularly disappointed with the, the with the with the, the points haul from the last five games. I think some of the some of the performances within the 90 minutes haven't been good enough. But I think we're when still you're getting points though, I know we? but when you said when you put it into context of where we've come from mm. in terms of the performances and stuff like that, then it's definitely an improvement. There's no doubt about it. I mean Steve Thompson's definitely done more with this. What I do worry about though is that we haven't played any of the better teams in the league and we've struggled against some of the poorer teams. So that's that's an issue, you know. But I mean, Kenneth picked up a good win. They beat Dorking, didn't they? Um, yeah. And made an like, made an edge drew away at Chesterfield. Yeah. So there, so you know, like ten games is much of a muchness, isn't it? Mm. You know, I mean, it's starting to starting to take shape now. But after te- you know, ten games yeah. or so, twelve games, it's quarter of the season through. There's still a long way to go. I think, so, I think, I think, formation wise, I think it's got you got to look four four two just purely on the basis of I think you fix one like there's there's one player you fix and that's that's the centre mid isn't it other than that I mean you can talk about the right back to an extent but we've got a right back I think I think can do a job it's not you know I think we could definitely improve in that area but I think four three three there's so many it creates so many issues there's too many problems to try and fix yeah. what three do you five think... two again there's so many issues what do you think of Lundstrom what you've seen of him. I think, I think everyone said, yeah, it was good. It was okay yesterday. I would say. I think he was, he was, he was better than Shelton and Sheeran, by hands down. I mean, that doesn't need saying, does it? But I think Dan Gardner is, is a. I think they're different players, Gardner and Lundstrom. I think Gardner wants to go forward with the ball, and you, you feel like he wants the ball. He's con- the two games that he put, the, the few games that he played before he picked up his injury. He, he's coming for the ball all the time. He wants the ball. He wants to be that man that makes it tick. And I wanted Lundstrom to do the same in that game, and he looked a bit passive. Um, I think he's young, he is a young lad in, and I think it's one of those things. It might just take him time for him to find his place, but mm. he it's just, yeah, I think he just lacked a bit of him. he lacked a bit of movement as well. He kept drifting into that like left back area, kitchen push forward, and then he did it three or four times, and it was the fans were you heard the fans they just they just weren't happy at all with it because they just weren't doing anything we're just passing it backwards and forwards between him and he does drive and forward though from what i've seen you know like wheelston he drove forward he got a good crossing no one was on the end of it again last night he kept running running driving forward and turning out but no one was there to support him on the in the wide position because i think kitchen sort of sometimes just stops yeah. and then likes to go on his run so, but he should just carry on to get on the overlap a little bit more well, but then well, again I, he's got to worry about what's behind him as well if he gets yeah. caught out so it's it's really difficult but that, that's kind of shit that's kind of Sheeran's job though really to be covering for the fullback and like I, I what I want to see my ideal scenario if you got if you got Dan Gardner in team I'm not I don't know how this would work with Sheeran maybe with that too but like I want to see the likes of Lundstrom getting ahead and getting forward and supporting the strikers and and someone like Dan Gardner picking out those passes and having that midfielder that gets up uh, from the halfway line up to the box and starts, you, you know, like we used to in the good old days, the glory days, our midfielders used to support the attack all the time. And, and we, we pin teams back in that respect and they'd score quite, you know, they'd score goals from it. And, um, not just the midfielders it. scoring goals, but just keeping the keeping the pressure on the teams and putting the ball back in the box and winning the second balls and strikers you're talking, and feed you're off talking, it. You're talking about like box to box midfielders. I think I can't remember it was, but there's a there's there's it was a it was a manager who said box to box midfielders in the modern game are dead. They don't they don't ex- they don't really exist anymore in the same sense. Like, but when that, we looked when we looked at Lundstrom's heat map last season, he is the. Definition yeah. of a box to box midfielder. He's all over the place. So, 
I think um, there's a lot more to come from him, isn't there? So we'll um, yeah. we'll just have him, to wait him and Gardner game. next to each other. I think that's some that would be something special. But it's keeping Gardner yeah. fit in it. He's not going to yeah. play every game. So no. then I think maybe, you, you maybe a somebody. diamond formation. You don't know. Do you know? Like Dave a, sitting here doing just drawing those little circles. I'm, with just, I'm just trying to just, uh, yeah. It's hard, isn't it? It's, yeah, it is hard. Yeah, hard. it is. But I think look, I think for for me uh, over the next over the coming weeks and months. A lot of this now is 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 on the players, like um, this oh, one. Yeah, a lot of it's on the players. I want to see them. You know, they've it's up to them. Like last night was um, not just about the, the formation, the manager. They capitulated those players. They went to sixes and sevens at the back. They weren't they weren't organised. They weren't pushing. They weren't making it live. They've got to stand up and 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 and, and it's, the missing think, a voice in midfield. Like how old lunch from 21, 22? 24, isn't he, I, think. I don't know. But he's only a young lad and he can't lead the game. He should be a bit more... I've, I've interviewed Nathan Shearer and again, he does get a lot of criticism, which is unfair. But I don't think he's that vocal midfield. He's a quite a quiet lad. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's just that, does his job, runs every inch of the pitch and he, yeah. he, he can't pass for toffee sometimes. But believe me, he does. He gives you 110% every time. He never gives up. I, I don't know. I, mean, I, I think he's, 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 he's absolutely... I, I, I like him. He... he, he, he... Like he's, say, he's, he's a bit on of a scared goal. Yeah, but uh, yeah, but in the I, I think he was solid yesterday, to be fair. Yeah, he is, I and mean, he gets he, he wins tackles and he puts the shift in and he, he goes to pieces though when on. Shelton comes on. I don't know why. They, they do the same job. This is yeah. if you watch him on the pitch, they do the same job. I think they're the same player. People give Shelton criticism, and and I agree, he's been he's been awful. But I think he's never played alongside a player that isn't Sheeran. And I don't think I don't uh, at least I don't think so this season. I'm not sure whether that's that's true, but um, well, no, Sheeran started. I think Sheeran started every game, hasn't he? Yeah. So, so. I, I haven't. We know it don't work with with them with with them too. Because, like I say, I think they do the same job. They both. I think they get in each other's way. Simply, I think they they both kind of look at each other, and you see Shelton pointing all the time. And I think he's like, "Oh, you should do it. I should do it." It's like that Spider Man meme when they're all going on. Mm. Then. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, no, I mean, Shelton literally does point like that I, through the whole And game. everyone's been asking where Fondop is. You know what I mean? He's just completely out, out of the picture at the moment. I, you know, with, with Nuttall and, you know, his performance last night, I think he, I think he let down Tom in, in some respects because he, he didn't make any impact. So, I tell you what, if you'd have brought Fondop on last night, I think he would have made a lot more of an impact. He just causes problems and he's all yeah. arms, he's all legs, he jumps around, he's up, he's dead aggressive, he'll bully defenders. Nuttall's that, not, not that sort of player, is he? It's always well, not a bully, Fondop's is he? always always got the... the He'll, he'll lash one warning from 25 yards and, and you know, like Nuttall very rarely has a goal. Like Fondop's got that in him. Look, I don't know. Look, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to end a bit early tonight, uh, Chris. Anyway, thanks for the call, mate. It was really good. Cheers, mate. Uh, thanks for coming talk, on. Talk to you soon, pal. Um, yeah. So yeah, no, it's, um, it's a tough one, but at the end of the day, as long as, um, as long as we stop, we, we you know, we, we stopped, we've stopped that, the rot that was on the runs with, haven't we? we we've stopped. Yeah. Yeah. We're not. We're unbeaten. We're unbeaten in five. Uh, a red and Martin Barlow, you are a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> it might be unavailable. A chicken. Oh dear. Anyway, uh, let's just. Uh, do you like coffee, Dave? Love it. So now, Dave, fans can buy us a coffee. How do you like your coffee? Mm, like a nice cream, white, frothy laddie. Laddie. Mm. Mm. So if you want to buy Dave a... Laddie. Then uh, you can go to buymeacoffee.com forward slash OAFC podcast. I'll just take mine black. Mm. Martin's saying why... I think it means why are you a chicken? Why is he a chicken? Well, why? come on the show and find out, Martin. Not, 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 not now, not we're, now. Going no, now. we're going I, now. I'm so. chicken it out now. But yeah, thanks as always for getting in touch, guys, and getting involved because without you, this would just be me talking to him and nobody wants that. So, oh, I do. Yeah, you do. But, uh, don't forget to go and vote for us at the Football Content Awards dot com forward slash voting best in non league, and that's where you find us. We'd love it if you would love it. Help us love win. it. That'd be really if good. you voted for us. Uh, podcast about on Monday morning at six. Yeah. Or you can listen to us on Olden Community Radio. 99 points. Nice as well. Nice. Is it 99.7 FM? FM. At Saturday, on Saturday morning at 10 o'clock where we kind of mash the two shows together and uh, that. So I'm sure you'd be sick of us by then. But anyway, either way. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. Bye.
Thank you for listening to the Boundary Park Alert System, a QPod production hosted and produced weekly by Matt Dean, Andy Halliwell and Dave Bradley. QPod is Oldham's only dedicated podcast production company and if you'd like to learn more about how podcasting can help take your brand to the next level, visit kupod.co.uk. A huge thank you goes to all those people who subscribe to the podcast on Spotify. We really appreciate you all. Please visit oafcpodcast.co.uk and click be a supporter or find the link in the show notes if you'd like to help us fund the show. It's only $2.99 per month to subscribe, but if you'd rather make a one-off donation, please visit buymeacoffee.com forward slash OAFC podcast or click the link on our website. Don't miss the Latics football phone in every Wednesday live from 8.30pm. Please visit youtube.com forward slash at OAFC podcast and do hit subscribe while you are there. You can also follow and interact with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and TikTok at OAFC podcast. Big thanks go to Eileen Finnegan for writing our excellent weekly blog, which we encourage you to read on our website every Saturday morning, and also to Paul Prendergast for providing us with all the Latics Mind questions. The title music for the show is by Manchester DJ and producer Starion, and for more information, visit bandcamp.com forward slash red laser records. If you'd like to be a guest or contribute to the show, we would love to hear from you. Until then, see you next time.